I have a new video for you guys because one of my favorite childhood actresses, Alison Stoner, has recently come forward about her traumatic experiences working as a Disney star and a child actor. She is calling out the big production companies like Disney, Nickelodeon, and more. So we're going to talk about her story and why the industry is so wrong. So let's get into it. So like I was saying, Alison Stoner is a former childhood actress who used to work with Disney. And you guys may recognize her from some of your favorites like The Camp Rocks, Cheaper by the Dozen, Step Up, and so much more. Because when Alison was a young girl, she was put to work. And now she is an adult who is calling out the industry and why it was so wrong for her. So I'm really excited to talk about her story, but I want to start this off from where I started off with Allison's story because like I said I was a fan from the beginning but I recently saw her on Twitter a couple of months ago and I want to share these tweets because I've been waiting for Allison to come forward because she was hinting it on Twitter. So back in July of 2018, Allison actually tweeted out to Seventeen Magazine because they wrote an article that they misreported in. Pretty much, she wrote, You misreported. I wasn't up for Hannah Montana. I had my own show, a spinoff of Raven, that competed against Hannah Montana during the same pilot season. If you want real drama, ask what Disney did to me on Camp Rock that I've had to keep a secret this whole time. So something obviously happened at Camp Rock when she was filming on set and she has been holding that inside for some time because like I said this tweet came out in 2018 and now we're in 2021. So Allison actually retweeted that original tweet and she wrote, it seems like this 28 tweet is getting some attention. If I give you, the public, information, I need to know that you are on the side of believing minors, not using our trauma for temporary amusement. If so, say yes, because I already have the first article ready to publish. So again, she has been holding this in for some time and I've been waiting for her to dish it out. She has also tweeted out, it's not a coincidence that months ago in the middle of the night, I suddenly felt compelled to write a full article without knowing if anyone else would be releasing their stories. Something's happening. May we all strengthen each other to come forward. And that's exactly what I want to do with my channel and just what I want to see in the world. Like, survivors uplifting other survivors. And today I am here to share Allison's story because I think it's incredibly important. And probably the first video to kick off my whole Disney series because Disney is incredibly problematic. We've been talking about a Nickelodeon a lot on my channel but Disney is just as bad. So let's go ahead and talk about what Allison shared in her recent video, which I will link below, and why the industry is just so bad. So just to give you guys some background, Allison Stoner is currently 27 years old. And in this video, she's going to talk about the toddler to train wreck pipeline, which is kind of an odd concept. Honestly, I've never heard of this before, but it makes sense because it's about child stars and those stars who start very young and they end up train wrecks when they're older. Honestly, I don't like the term train wreck because I feel like that is just a horrible way to describe like mental health issues and, you know, things like that. But that's what she's getting to, that these child stars are pretty much forced into these compromising situations because their mental health and their well-being aren't ever considered as a working star. They're pretty much just a machine in this industry generating a lot of money. And we're going to react to some of the little bits in her video. Honestly, everything she says is so important, so I encourage you to go watch the full video, but I've cut it into snippets that I wanted to share with you guys. So in this little bit right here, she's going to talk about the toddler to train wreck pipeline. It's expertly constructed and it's bolted in place by censoring the harm happening behind the scenes, manicuring aspirational lifestyles and outcomes, and then watching young lives tragically implode. You'll notice that she uses a lot of big words in this video, which is great because she seems very like smart and well-spoken, but sometimes it goes right over my head and pretty much she talks about the struggles of being a child star. One of the biggest struggles involved with being one of these young stars is the fact that you have to pretty much censor everything bad out of your life and just seem perfect at all times because you are a product that is selling for many people to view or to consume. Oh, consume sounds so weird. Like not actually eat, but you know, consume their content that they are a part of. 
Allison continues talking about the struggle of the industry and how children are always subjected to this horrible treatment because they're just thrown into it and there's no getting out of it. It's literally a cycle. Once you start as a child star and grow up, you start to have your downfall because you peaked at your career at what, like 10 years old? How can children unwittingly copy and paste the same horror stories, cries for help, and humiliating spirals? How come there have been no yeah. signs of improvement for centuries? As someone who lived it and witnessed thousands endure alongside me. Thousands, oh my gosh. Like That makes me think that there are just so many kids and stars out there who just went through hell and back being on these sets and working with you know directors or producers like Dan Schneider. Obviously, she never worked directly with Dan, but she was part of the whole Disney cult, which is just as bad. I can attest that what is missing from the pipeline narrative are clear action plans for intervention, long-term prevention, and accountability from studios agencies, and guardians. Exactly. Like when I hear her talk about this, it makes me think about Amanda Bynes and other stars who probably wouldn't have had such a horrible breakdown if they had a support system or if there was a plan, you know, as part of the industry to take care of these kids when they get to a vulnerable stage. Usually that being adulthood because their entire childhood has been them working their whole life and they are now just adults thrown into this world and they don't know how to function. Especially because a lot of these child childhood stars, they don't, you know, translate into adult films very easily. It's kind of hard to make the jump from, you know, kids entertainment to adult films. Why does adult films sound so bad when I say that? But you know, adults inside of films, oh my gosh. And pretty much they aren't taken as seriously when they get to that age. But then Allison gets a lot deeper because she talks a little bit more about the specific trauma associated with being a child star. And at this point, she is talking about an audition she went to at six years old. During this audition, she was asked to, you know, reenact some very, very awful things. So trigger warning. And what that does to you emotionally is just unrepairable. This morning, I'm being kidnapped and Ending in the fetal position under a chair with my body frozen in fear, I stand up, wipe my tears, and thank the stranger for the opportunity. Okay, you guys might be thrown off there, but pretty much she, again, is a six-year-old who is auditioning as someone who was just kidnapped and then horrible things happen to them, the R word, I have to censor it out, and she has to get to that emotionally to reenact that to this crew of people or, the, you know, this panel of people who are auditioning her. And she gets into detail on how that is very, very difficult for a child to do and, you know, psychologically bounce back. My mother is not versed in how to help me regulate my nervous system. I remain catatonic on the first half of the drive until I remember we're on the way to a second audition uh. for a princess toy ad. So again, she's sharing this awful experience about one day when she was six years old, she went and auditioned as someone who was just very violated. She got to that point emotionally and then she gets into the car. She's just numb because she, you know, got herself into that mindset that she was just kidnapped and these things happened. And she's on her way to another audition for a princess, like commercial type thing, just completely polar opposites. And at this point, she doesn't know how to regulate her emotions and neither does her mom. She doesn't know how to support her when she, you know, just had such an emotionally distressing experience and she needs to professionally bounce back and get to the next gig. That's just not how your emotions work. I mean, if you guys think about when you get really upset and fired up and it takes some time for that to just kind of alleviate and go away. Well, if you trick your mind into thinking that is happening, like a lot of actors and actresses do, that will just stay with you and it could cause long-term damage, especially to a six-year-old. In this bit, she's going to talk a little bit more about the long-term damage of, you know, playing these type of roles or parts at such a young age. These visceral portrayals of scenarios etch themselves into my body memory and compound with trauma occurring in real life behind closed doors. Again, a lot of big words there that kind of fly over my head, but pretty much she's talking about how she like gets PTSD from this situation. Like when you are acting like you were just kidnapped and these things happened to you, it's kind of hard to get out of that. And it messes with your mind and the trauma you have going on in your life because it starts triggering things, you start associating things. At one point she talks about how if she, you know, gets the role for that part, then she is rewarded for how she was emotional 
emotionally acting, you know, during that audition. And if she gets an Oscar, she's even more rewarded for it. So it's a really, really, uh, you know, slippery skill because are you a great actress or are you putting yourself into this place where you are going to have emotional distress and the adults love it. They don't really care. They just need to get a good piece out there. And when you're rewarded for it, you start to learn behaviors that really don't add up with real life situations. So yeah, Allison talks a little bit more about those struggles. To clarify, I will be paid to recreate kidnapping and repeatedly on set with a crew of more strangers. So child or not, obviously that's going to cause a lot of trauma to whoever's put in that situation. And keep in mind, a six-year-old, like of course it's gonna be really bad. If I'm especially believable, I may even get an Oscar and the praise of America. Let's contextualize this. Developmentally, my perceptions of healthy relational attachment and awareness of my environment are highly impressionable. True. I mean, you're six years old, so of course you're going to pick up anything really around you, especially if you're being told to do these things and rewarded for it. Like, it's going to catch on. Before this clip in the video, Allison does actually offer a solution, and she believes that there should be a third-party mental health advocate or, you know, specialist there on set who can help the children and the actors kind of get back to where they were before they went into a very intense scene, or just to monitor the set in general and make sure that the set and the production team and the director, everyone is following guidelines. Maybe that would alleviate some of the pressure that these child stars feel, but at the end of the day, there's just so much pressure, it caves in. And right here, Allison talks a little bit about the pressure she feels to keep it all going, because when you become a pretty big star, you start to have people below you and companies working for you, and it's a lot to depend on. I'm currently contractually obligated to complete multiple overlapping projects. I'm president of a corporation with salaried family members and multi-vertical teams. Again, a young kid and her acting is supporting multiple families and people and salaries, and that's a lot of pressure. Revenue models for billion dollar media empires revolve around my peers and my faces, talents, and labor. So at this point, she's talking about how much she was worked as a child star. And when it comes to child labor laws, there are definitely a lot of loopholes there. I mean, there are 17 states in the United States that do not currently have child labor laws or protection laws for these stars, even though, you know, there are stars working there. And something else that she brought up that I found interesting was that when you are a child star on multiple productions, they aren't considering all of the different productions in your child labor laws. Like the laws only apply to one production. So if you're working five different productions and commercials and all that, they all have their own laws and they only care about what they're doing. They don't care about what you're doing on, you know, the time off. You're just constantly working. Meanwhile, agents are encouraging me to look at early emancipation so I can work longer hours. <sighs> This is going to increase my hireability. So she's already so overworked and they want her to work even more. Actually, if you get emancipated, you can work even longer hours. Again, a 16 year old not really knowing what that means. And at this point, I find this part of the video so sad because she finally realizes that her life was just kind of sold off to the industry and that's it. And then it hits me. My childhood is officially gone. I can count on one hand how many times I've seen my father since I was little. That is so sad. I mean, think about it. They really are just completely separated from their family and they grow up on set with these adults and then they they become an adult and we don't need you on the television shows anymore. So they're just left with nothing. My father had all three of his daughters ripped away from him and swallowed up by a system that would replace me in seconds. That is so true because really at the end of the day, these productions don't care about the talent themselves. I mean, they can be replaced like this and so many kids want to be on these kid TV shows and be celebrities. Like, you should be grateful. And that is the manipulation behind it because they think they've got something really good that they don't ever want to give up and at the same time, they're being so harmed in that moment. At this point in the video, Allison shares a little bit about her education and how she was missing months and months of school and how she was years behind when it comes to her studies because primarily her focus has been pleasing these adults on set as a child actor and that's how she learned. I mean, she was a young kid, she was rewarded for doing well, and she continued to do that. But then once she became an adult, it all just stopped because, again, television, like, entertainment for, you know, children versus adults are way different. And listen to what she has to say. After 
over 200 movies, shows, videos, tours. I'll start over and retrain, reintroduce myself. Culturally, I'll be reduced to my past characters and expected to fade into a nostalgic memory or a has-been. That kind of reminds me of Jeanette McCurdy's frustrations because she was on Nickelodeon for so long that that became her identity and it was hard for her to break out of it. She pretty much couldn't land any role in Hollywood because her work on iCarly was so different than how, you know, normal movies work. They're not overlit and screaming all of the time and she really couldn't break apart from that kid, you know, character that she played and she lost herself in it. Allison is now 17 in her story and at this point she's about to become an adult. She's realizing that she has no friends at all because when she was younger she didn't make any friends because they told her not to have friends so that they could protect confidential information about shows and such. So she really has no one in her life to you know help her or to back her up and at this point she wants to seek help for an ED because she's about 20 pounds underweight. She doesn't feel good and she needs to step back and get into a facility so that she can get some help. I dared to lose everything I'd worked for and walk away long enough to gain paradigm shattering insight. These privileges are not equally available, distributed, or even encouraged. Encouraged. That is the key word there because when she went to go to rehab because she needed help, she was 20 pounds underweight, she was struggling with her ED, her agent was telling her not to do it, and she was actually being sent to auditions while she was on bed rest recovering. And she shares the moment when she actually went into the rehab facility and she sat down in the bed and she was watching some TV and she was laughing. It was the first break that she had in a long time and in that moment she actually realized that she was on that TV screen in that production and it was just such a full circle moment for her because she's sitting here in a rehab trying to get help for what she has been going through for years and years now trying to make sense of it all and then she sees herself on the TV screen not even realizing that was a show she was a part of because she's just been so overworked. So at the end of her video Allison shares a little bit more about the lack of resources out there for child stars because the parents, the producers, those who work on set with children do not have any training or experience on how to deal with these kids. There are no mental health practitioners and it would be really beneficial if, you know, the parents or if producers or if someone could, you know, consume some type of material that, you know, provides them the direction on how to take care of a child on set because at the end of the day, these producers and directors, they're not here to babysit. They're here to create a product that they are going to deliver to their boss and that's it at the end of the day and they don't want to be dealing with these children but they have to because putting these kids in compromising situations and just expecting them to do well and flourish isn't all right and that's why there's this whole toddler to train wreck pipeline because Allison acknowledges that there is a, a, a whole cycle that exists in Hollywood with these child stars and they end up all having breakdowns later on in their lives and it's because they were forced into stardom for so long. Like honestly thinking about this story makes me think of like the Olsen twins and Amanda Vines and just so many celebrities out there. So I am so thankful for Allison for coming forward. Um, I am still a little interested in that initial tweet about Camp Rock, how she talks about like what they did to her. I kind of want to know what exactly happened on Camp Rock and when I went into this video I kind of thought that we would get that answer but we didn't which is fine if she's not comfortable talking about it yet. Maybe she can't even legally talk about it. I I don't know but I would be interested to see because there is a lot of bad stuff involved with Disney. There's a lot of stories, controversies, but for some reason they're a lot better at swiping it under the rug than Nickelodeon is. I don't know if it's because of legal threats or what's going on here, but there are Disney stars who want to come forward and speak about what happened to them, but they're too scared to. And is that because of Disney? Is that just because of Hollywood? Do these survivors not think that these people will believe them? Because Allison is getting a lot of great feedback. So I want to hear what you guys think in the comments below and what you think about her story and how she shared it. Again, she's very artic articulate. I can't even say the word. She's very articulate and she uses very big words, which I appreciate, but when I was like watching it it did take me a second to just like 
thinking about what she was actually saying. And maybe that's just me being like actually dumb. But again, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'm actually wearing a shirt from one of you guys, um, Breathe Positivity. I believe the brand is Breathe Positivity underscore on Instagram. So definitely go check them out. But at the end of my videos, I usually open, oh my gosh, open a BL Box item. And this is an item I'm gonna open today. It's from BGL Jewelry and they are in the United States. If you guys ever wanna send me anything, I have my address listed in below. Ooh, this is easy to open. I recently like stabbed my hand. Um, on camera and it really actually, oh my gosh, it's still here. I have a mark from it. Um, it really hurts. So this is a nice package to open and let's see if there is a letter inside. Ooh, okay. Ooh, okay, so this looks like it's a card. Oh my gosh, the card had its, has its own package. I love that. And then here is, oh, the jewelry. So let's go ahead and see, is there a, nope, there's no letter in here. Let's see if this has some writing on it. You guys know I like when there's some writing so I know who it's from. <gasps> Wait, for, thank you for your support, BGL Jewelry. But I didn't order anything. They just sent it to me. So I don't know who it is, but thank you so much, BGL, so far. Maybe there's something inside here. But let's go ahead and see. I'm kind of nervous. Like, watch it be something weird. <gasps> Ooh. Oh. My. Gosh. <gasps> these are... Hold up. Hold up. Hold up. Hold up. Okay, these are gorgeous. So, first off, let's start off with this blue stone bracelet. Oh. <gasps> Stop. BGL, like you did too well. This is so nice. Look at this bracelet. It feels really good. And I can tell, I've recently been getting a lot of crystals from you guys. So I can tell when they are good crystals. And this one is gorgeous. And then this one, this one took away my breath when I saw it because I think this is just, oh my gosh, this is my favorite. So it's black and it's got like some like kind of diamond looking like detail. Um, Obviously not like real diamond, but like, you know, sparkles. And then it's got like all these different stones. I feel like the avatar, like we've got fire, air, earth, water. Like, I don't know. I love it. And it's kind of like also a rainbow at the same time. So these are amazing. Oh my gosh. I don't know who BGL or BG, BGL is, but thank you so much. And then finally, oh my gosh, this is so pretty. So this looks like a stone they sent me and look how pretty it looks. Is it a stone? I'm like, recently someone sent me a resin, um, like a, a resin thing. And I couldn't tell if it was, okay, I think this is actually stone. So it looks like stone and look how pretty, <gasps> how it like just shines on it. I love it so much. These are legit. Thank you so much. And please let me know who you are. Email me or something. I would love to properly thank you by name, but thank you so much BGL Jewelry. And if this is their small business, then check it out below because I will link it below. And these are awesome. I mean, this is just breathtaking. This one's not coming off. So thank you. And I will see you guys in a new video soon. Bye guys.